and I can just go. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Life Church Timaru. Um, we're just so glad that you are joining us um, in a home church near you. And um, as you are meeting with people, it's so good to be connected together. Hey, just a few little notices that we have before we launch into um, um, worshiping Jesus and getting into the Word. Um, we've got Joan who's going to just come and she's just going to share about Life Keys, um, which is a course that we do at Life Church Timur, and that's coming up soon. And there's no better person to talk about it um, than Joan. So she's coming. But just as she's on her way up here, yep, come on up. Yep, give her up at home, give her a clap. Yeah, cool. Hey, Joan. Martin. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Joan McCarran. and I've been doing the Life Keys programs for about 16 or 17 years. And I do it because I see such a growth in people who do it, and that is really exciting. So the Search for Life program that is coming up is aptly named um, because it looks at why we do what we do and what we look at to search for life. Because, you know, we all have needs of being loved and accepted and belonging. And it's interesting what we look at to fulfill those needs. Um, so, so we fill them up with earthly needs and then we end up being disillusioned and disappointed and in a mess. So Search for Life and the 40-minute video teaching actually puts like a plumb line down of God's teaching against which we can examine our lives and the way we do things. Um, and it gives us a good insight as to how we can do things better and how can we, we can realign our lives in a better way. So the 40-minute teaching is followed by a small group experience where we become vulnerable and actually start talking about how the teaching has affected our lives or how, what enlightenment we've had from the teaching. So it's really exciting to see people just wake up and go, oh, I don't have to do life like that anymore. I can do life differently. So it's a really good program. It starts on Tuesday the 8th of February at 7 p.m. And we're offering a morning one as well on Wednesday at 9.30. So um, feel free to contact us and find out more about it. It's uh, for 10 weeks, two and a half hours each session. So look forward to seeing you guys there. That is awesome. Always good testimonies every time. So that's just absolutely fantastic. Hey, I just want to thank all those who give at Life Church Timaru. Um, and I just encourage you um, just to keep giving online is the best way to do it. But if you want to give or sow in to what we're doing as a church ministry, um, just get contact with us at the office and we can help you get some bank details and everything like that. So we're just going to jump to our notices, our weekly notices. So just watch the screen and um, absorb what's going on at Life Church Timaru. It's coming. Well, that's coming. I will. There it is. Here we go. Brothers and sisters, come and listen to what I have to say. For our sins, he was sin, crucified.
Awesome. So there's lots of great things happening here at Life Church Timaru. One of those two big things I think are coming up that are great is first of all, Life Groups. That's our midweek group that's starting up that this week coming up. So find a Life Group, be a part of that. And also just be aware, Kids Church, um, Life Kids is also starting up really soon. And we will have them here at the church on the Sunday morning when you're at your lounge church. So you'll drop them off here and then you'll race away to go to lounge church and then you'll come and pick them up. So we're making a space for the kids as well. So just be aware of that. Keep an eye on that. Be there because it'll be great. Amen. Should we worship Jesus? Just want to encourage you. Stand up wherever you are in your lounge group. Shut your eyes. Pretend you're not looking at anyone. If you maybe you're across the couch from somebody, just ignore them. Just focus in on Jesus. Because this is what we want to do. We want to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So, Lord Jesus, we just come together this morning. We come together to praise your name because you're good. You're the good, good Father. We want to worship you. We just want to put away all the things of the week and just focus in on you right now. We don't want to focus in on the person in the room with us. We just want to focus in the person of the Jesus Christ in the room with us. So help us, Lord. Enjoy your presence. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just come into each lounge right now. Come, Holy Spirit, just pour your love into each each lounge right now, every group that's meeting. Let them feel your presence. Know that you love them. Know that you're amongst us. Lord Jesus, we just want to bless you now with our worship. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
Lord, we thank you there. You come and you are enthroned on the praises of your people. Lord, thank you that we can experience this exactly that this morning. Lord, in all the different places, all across the city and beyond the city, and wherever else in this world someone's listening, Lord, I just pray that they feel the tangible presence of you just coming on in and, and, and do what only you can do. Lord, so we thank you, Lord. We thank you because you are worthy of it all. And you are the all in all, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. You rock as usual. Woo! Is it all right, babe? Cool. Good morning, everyone. Just had my cup of coffee and breakfast. It was awesome. <laughs> Well, one thing we can agree on, the speaker today is way more beautiful than last week's. <laughs> Woo! So, hey, welcome everyone. Kat Manson, Assistant Pastor here at Life Church. And um, I've got the honor today to share. And um, yeah, excited slash nervous, but it's always a good combination. And we're going to do a bit of reading today, so that's a good thing. Get into the Word. Right, I'll just pray to just get focused, all right? So, Lord, I thank you for your Word. I thank you for, for the life that's in your Word. I thank you that your Word is alive and well, Lord God, and that it pierces, Lord God, our hearts when we read it. And, Lord, I just pray that as we share or as I share today and as we read your Word, that... It, it just comes alive afresh, Lord God, that there's a spirit of revelation in the room, Lord God, and that um, we're able just to peel another layer of your truth and of your wisdom and of your insights and of your guidance for our lives. Amen. Awesome. That's good. Um, so this week, just sort of sharing how it came about me speaking today, we had a, a staff, staff gathering or meeting and I was sharing something in there, and then Martin just sneakily came to me and just said, hey, would you, would you share? Would you preach? And I um, sort of got a bit surprised by that, but at the same time I was up for a challenge because we were taught to, you know, when it feels uncomfortable, we, we're going to do it. We're going to step out in faith. That was one of the recent messages to, you know, not be shy to be uncomfortable and to see what God can do through it. And so I, I said yes. And so um, we were sharing in that, I'll just sum it up quickly. Um, we were in 2 Samuel chapter 5, which we're not really focusing on as such, but you can go back and, and read, read that later. And uh, a quick summary of that is, is David is being um, pretty much made king of Israel in that chapter. And in that chapter, he um, gets to conquer Jerusalem, and he calls it the city of David. And um, it is a whole series of him um, approaching a battle, and, and pretty much every time before he approaches the battle, he inquires of the Lord. And that's pretty much something that I felt highlighted in the chapter for me to dig deeper today, and to just really um, yeah, go into that a little bit more, because I think it's a lifestyle of when things come, to not, um, not be shy of going to the Lord and inquiring from, of Him. So that we are, we are actually, that's our, our first resource. It's not our last resource, but our first. You know, and that we're actually getting into a habit of making, inquiring of the Lord be our first thing to do. Um, so I, I pretty much call this message, I ask of me. Because I think it's really, it's, it's so important for us to, to learn that. And I think it's something that, it's nearly good to remember that often as parents, we want the kids to come and ask. Or we want to um, be asked for something. Or we see a kid sometimes being hesitant to ask, but we're like, just, just ask. Just say it. You know, and I think sometimes we've got to be 
be comfortable with going to the Lord and asking and coming to Him. So I want to highlight here Psalm 2 verse 8. And I have it up here. Two different versions. First, NIV. Um, just read out of there. Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. So that's Psalm 2 verse 8. It said it in a previous slide. Um, I think it's just such a promise that's attached to asking God. And I think that's something that we are not to not to shy away from. To, to actually know that if we come to him and ask, potentially a result can be humongous. Like, a, and a big impact. But at the same time, I also like that in here in the Passion Translation, it says, ask me to give you the nations and I will do it. And they shall become your legacy your domain will stretch to the ends of the earth. It's like, it's this kind of, it, it, there's so much weight to it, you know, so much weight attached. And I actually really like, so like the definition of nations, I actually looked it up because it's such a big um, emphasis on here. The, a nation is actually a large body of people. United, let's see if I can read on there. United by common descent, history, culture, or language, inhabiting a particular con country or territory. Um, as I wrote that down, I actually felt like the Lord put a word on my heart, and just, just fly with me here, is your, um, your place where you're from or what you're born into is not your doing. It's just something, I wonder if someone, someone here or someone who's at home listening, it's just sometimes it can cause so much strife, but it's actually not something you decided. So a culture you belong to, or a nation you belong to, or a family you belong to or come from, it's not, it's not your doing. The, the potential pride that can be attached to it, or the potential shame that can be attached to it, is none of your doing, okay? So you could, just deal with it. That's what I'm going to say to that one. I just felt it was really strongly risen because I think there's always this, this potential. It's like, well, I'm from there or I'm from this or whatever. But actually, you had nothing to do with it, did you? So, yeah, thanks, Sarah. Thank you. But it's, it's important. But here, ask of me and I'll give you the nations. It's like, ask of me and I'll give you a body of people. It's not a nation as in a country, but it's actually a body of people that you potentially influence. And so to be actually not holding back of asking God how to go about that, how to influence that body of people that you are potentially influencing and how you're going to be the influencer of that. It's a real tacky word, influencer, I think. But it's, yeah, it's about actually you know, asking of God to give you the insights to end up, you know, getting a nation. And so we want to believe for at least New Zealand, since we're in this nation with the people of Aotearoa. And um, so we, we need to ask of the Lord. Then I sort of kept looking into this whole asking and, you know, I guess asking is praying, right? So it's having a conversation with God. It's not like, yeah, it's not a tick list, okay? Don't go for the tick list. Like, I want this, I want that. There's a big difference between a need and a want and a, you know, a bit of God breathed on it, not just a, you know, vending machine scenario, but actually a, a co-laboring with God and getting his heart for things and then asking alongside what his heart is and then praying that into being. Um, I think it's really suitable, this topic right now, actually, because we are heading towards the prayer and fasting week anyway as a church. So that's coming up towards the end of the month, I think. Um, but yeah, keep that in mind. So then one, another thing that I thought was quite interesting is that actually, when it came to prayer, the only thing the disciples ever asked Jesus to, to teach them was actually to pray. Which is quite strange because, you know, they, all day they, they walked with him and they did life with him. And then, um, then they, at one point, that was the, the secret thing that Jesus did by himself, really. 
like he it always talked about him going seeking you know solitary places and things and i think it kept him wondering like wow what's he doing in that space that he comes back and is with us and then if we walk you know through the towns and whatnot and see all this stuff happen like it's like teach us what what do you do in that spot you know what's happening so we're gonna go to luke 11 i go back to that luke 11 one to three let's go there I've got NIV, so I was just going to read it in NIV. It's my great German accent. Right. Can I have a drink? Sorry. Thanks. Cool. You there? I hope you're all there at home. Better hard copy than, than hard, you know, go, go hard copy. I love hard copy. Use pages. It's great. Okay, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Just as John taught his disciples, oh, just as John taught his disciples, sorry. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. Then he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and he goes to him at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him the bread because he is his friend, Yet because of the man's persistence, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask and, I will be give it, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of your fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So good, eh? So key words that really jumped out for me here is like persistence. It's like, it's not even out of a, a kindness he gives. It's like, oh man, it comes back, he keeps knocking. It's like, it, it's sort of a, a stra it definitely is a negative somewhat connotation in that space, right? It's not like you're excited to serve your friend and give him something, you know, it's actually really um, just out of just being annoyed, nearly. He goes and, and serves this friend or gives him something. And I think sometimes it's, it's hard to imagine that that's a, a you know, a comparison to prayer, but actually sometimes I think it's just one more time. Just one more time. We'll, we'll come one more time. We're not giving up. You know, we, 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 we don't know time frames, really, do we? We don't know God's time frames. And, and sometimes we just, we just can't, the luxury to give up is too big of a cost. You know, the, the, just to, yeah, maybe not everything turns out, but, but keep going. Keep going. And I mean, the, the, the uh, encouragement here is just to ask. Ask and seek and knock. And I think asking, the more you know God, the freer you can ask, you know. The author of everything asks you to ask him. Yeah. Isn't that a random idea, you know, really? It's just so, so kind yeah. of God to, to allow us to come to him with with you know, desires or with what we'd love to see happen in our lives or other people's lives. And then because it's such a big topic, and of course the Gospels are sort of mirroring each other, um, I just jumped over to Matthew 7, 7 to 9, where it's again, it's just highlighted. And I think the more often you, you compare the Gospels and read through the Gospels, and, and the more often you see the same thing, I think the more it wants to speak to us to actually say, why did they all say it? Like, some things are just in one of the Gospels, and some of the things are just about every, every Gospel, and you're like, 
they all watched it. Well, I guess except Luke, I guess, but they all watched Jesus do things, but there's certain things they wrote down. Yeah. And, and it, we have to think about or take time to consider why would they write that down? Why did the Holy Spirit highlight that in their lives so that we, we read it today, thousands of years later, and, and be challenged in our walk, you know? So Matthew, again, here we go, hang on, where is it? There's somewhere there. Ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives, he who knocks finds, and to him who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for a bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? I think it's, re- oh, yeah, that's cool. It's like, you really think, like, you know, where people talk about just good people and, then, you know, and then there's evil. But I think if, if people that don't even know God know how to look after their children out there, how much more, how much more does God know how to look after us? You know, and, and I mean, here it talks about if you ask for bread, it won't give you stone. So, you know, just to see what's happening and see what God's, God's teaching you through it at this time. Um, but then I also thought, you know, t- talking about asking, have you ever had someone or you ask, like as a mom, I often have the situation, oh, what do you want for dinner? And then like, oh, just whatever, anything or and then it's like, give me something specific. Like, I don't want to guess myself. Like, I actually don't want to, that's why I'm asking, so that I get a, a decent answer back, you know. Or as a gift, you know, husband, wife, I'm not sure there's, some, oh, what would you like for, for, you know, birthday or Christmas? And, and then it's like, and if you don't get anything specific, you feel so much pressure or it's just sometimes so vague. And, and then it's really hard to work with, you know. And I think sometimes we need to learn to be really specific in asking as well. And so, um, to me, that was probably one of the things that I felt highlighted from the Wednesday staff meeting was about being specific in our prayer life. Being specific how we ask so that it is measurable that we get an answer to our prayer. And I think that's really sometimes like that. So if you, if you ask a question, you would like just a straight answer back, don't you? In a way, and I think for, for God, I think sometimes, maybe, I'm, I don't know, I'm just imagining it, but I, I think, you know, if we, if we, if we ask him a, a, a prayer, like we had this discussion with our kids a lot, where, you know, they, we pray at night time, or it's like, oh, we say, hope that the day goes well. And it's like, well, yeah, that's pretty, but can we make it a bit more like, What's something today that we can pray for? Something that you tomorrow can come back to me with a story. So we're all excited about it, that God actually stepped in and did something about it, you know. Yeah. So, so there was something that after, I think, after a while, this sign made us go a bit tired of, of the broad, broad prayers at the time. And we had this discussion. And I think it's really important to actually come to God and, 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 and pull your heart out and be actually quite specific. You're allowed to be. It's a safe space, you know. It's a safe space to come to God, and 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 share your heart, and then let it mold your heart, but also come with a request or with a specific prayer or question, you know. So what they are right there? Use your voice, all right. In your in your prayer life, use your voice. You know, don't pray in your head only. Something I have to pull myself up at times because it can be really a bit of a head game sometimes, but it's actually project your voice sometimes and speak it out, you know, when you're being specific. or And um, write things down too. Like when you have a, a prayer request or something, you need to keep writing it down so that you have, you have something to celebrate. Um, back in that chapter with da- um, David, um, he actually celebrates once the... Um, the presence of God comes. You know, the whole town celebrates. And it's, it was the whole thing about um, just preparing a space for God to dwell, you know. And so they're celebrating that, that victory. And I think really as church, we've got to celebrate it so that others are excited with us. So we're not those sad old Christians who's just like, you know, just like, oh yeah, well, tell your face you are one. But it's like, it's actually something that we have every day a victory to celebrate, Right. 
And sometimes we have to force ourselves a little bit. Yeah, I know it's near like worship. Sometimes you don't feel like, woohoo, you know, being joyful. But sometimes we just have to choose to be. And so, so we can celebrate. So if you write it down, we can celebrate it. And then we've got to share those breakthroughs. Every breakthrough shared is a potential another further breakthrough for someone else. Because it's a sheer testimony that someone else is encouraged by that that person might have the faith to believe for as well or knows a friend or someone that they can share it with or, you know, just to, to not hold back sharing it. And it's not, it's not as, a, you know, you know a showing off. It's actually we need to celebrate and learn to celebrate well breakthroughs that we have. And, yeah, like your victories in that are not yours to keep. They don't belong to you. Um, Another thing, just to wrap it up as well, actually, is just in Proverbs 13, 12, it says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. And I really believe that it is really like hope. I think hope is a prayer. We, we turn hope for something into a prayer for something, right? And, and if we hear it being, you know, come to life, or if it's um, answered prayer, then, then we are getting life out of that. You know, it's for us a, a tree of life. Feel free just to go a bit of, Amanda, do you have awesome, awesome surrounding sound? Hope you can still hear me. So really to wrap it up at this point is, let's be a church that is not shy to ask the Lord. That, that our goal is the nation's. You know, our goal is, is first our home, yes, our town, our city, our nation, or our country, but actually to dream big with Him, to ask for the nations, to like, give me New Zealand, I want to, just give me insight, give me, give me words for someone around me, give me whatever, I don't know, this, this just can become so creative if you have the courage to ask of Him. And, and to be a church that's looking out for breakthroughs and, and to celebrate breakthroughs with others and then to share and, and to carry one another's burdens for the breakthrough, to contend together for it, you know. Um, so just as, as you're at home right now, you know, if you after this session and after the, the worship, you know, you can share about breakthroughs you've experienced or, or share about breakthroughs you're contending for so that others can carry it with you. So that we all can celebrate if the breakthrough is coming because that's one thing that can guarantee you that breakthrough is coming and it can look this way or that way but God is the God of breakthroughs and and it's just something that we got to stand with and and we're not compromising in and we're believing for and so I just really want to um, yeah just wrap it up Martin you want to come up that'd be awesome Amen. Amen. Our God is the God of the breakthrough. Amen. But you've got to ask for it. Thanks, Kat. This is so good. So encouraging. What are you praying for? Are you being specific? Have you got a voice? Is your voice nice and loud? Are you getting it out there? Are you writing it down? You know, as we just have home church right now, you could maybe even write some stuff down as a home church and then Maybe next week you can come back together and, and have a look at what you've written down to celebrate it together. And like I love what Kat said, the victories that you get are not your own. I just feel like some of the most encouraging times when I'm going through something is when I hear someone else share their victory with me and it's like, wow, if they can have it, I can have it. If they can get it, I can get it. You know, um, so let's be that right now. Let's take this time and we're going to have one more song our team are going to close out um, so they're going to play a song and then and I'm just going to pray for you right now but I want to encourage you in your home group in your house church right now in your home church if you're at home right now with your kids if you haven't gone to a home church and you're just as a family maybe the kids are in the yard running around why don't you grab them in and pray for them and say kids what do you want and pray with them and teach them how to pray with a voice and being specific. Amen. Thanks again, Kat. Heavenly Father, we just love you. We worship you. You're the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father God, you taught us how to pray. And I pray that we'd be a church that prays, that believes, that has hope, 
that when we pray for the nation, we, we pray for that group of people, like Kat said, that word nation is a group of people. That group of people might be our family, that group of people might be our work colleagues. But when we pray for them, we're believing and we can see that the, our good, good Father will just bring in and answer those prayers for us. Thank you, Jesus, that you answer our prayers. Bless everyone this week. Bless those out there. I want to say it. I want to say this. Bless those out there in cyber world. <laughs> Be blessed. Be blessed. Let's just sing this last song together and um, enjoy your cup of tea and everything like that. Thanks for joining us. Amen. Every